Hi, I'm Dr. Nathan Ritter from CardiacGage.com. I'm a cardiologist in New York. This is a series of three videos about the 11 dumbest things you could do for your heart. So I did my best to put them in some sensible order. Pretty much they're all dumb, so um, it's debatable what's the worst, uh, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So number 11, putting too much faith into medications or supplements as something that's going to help you live longer, prevent heart attacks and strokes, and really improve your health. So I'm a doctor, I prescribe medications all the time, and sometimes they're absolutely mandatory, but a lot of times they don't address the real problem. Um, and to think that if you're gonna take a pill, then everything's gonna be okay is uh, a misconception and not a good thing to do for your heart. You gotta act in other ways beyond just taking pills to have healthy blood vessels. Even worse than thinking medications are the only answer would be thinking supplements are the only answer. So there are tons of supplements out there. They're unproven to really be effective in preventing heart attacks and strokes, yet they're sold with the idea that that's what's gonna happen. Always at the bottom, in the fine print, there's a statement about how the supplements haven't really been properly tested and they are not intended to cure or treat any disease. So putting uh, all your faith in supplements really uh, is, a, is a bad idea. I think a really a you know, pretty, pretty dumb thing to do uh, to expect results and uh, when you're taking some uh, capsule of something that's, that's not been proven to actually work. That's number 11. Number 10 is in the opposite direction of number 11, and that is there are occasions, number 10, where medicines are very important and make a big difference for somebody's health. And I, I certainly experienced that in my practice where, uh, for example, if someone has a heart attack and they get a stent put in, that's a small wire tube that goes inside an artery, if uh, they have a stent put in, then the medications are mandatory. They're absolutely necessary. Without the medicines, the stent will suddenly plug up and possibly cause a larger heart attack than was happening in the first place. In that instance, taking your medications is super important. You need to understand that with the medicines, some of them that you get from the doc might be optional to a degree, but others may be super important. So number 10, dumbest thing you could do would be to blow off all your medications and expect to do well. Um, you really need to understand why you're on each medicine and, um, and then you decide with your doctor what you absolutely have to take. Here's a video clip of exactly what I'm talking about with the medication. This is a set of pictures showing um, a plugged artery. Uh, you can barely see the stent here and that um, that's totally plugged with a blood clot because the person um, who had the stent stopped their aspirin and clopidogrel. Um, those two medicines were critical for keeping the stent open uh, a couple months after the stent was put in. So that stent suddenly plugged up with a blood clot and caused a humongous heart attack. It was terrible. Um, here's a set of images showing uh, how the interventional cardiologist put a wire through the blocked artery and then uh, blood flow resumed through the artery. So this is an example of uh, what can happen when uh, a person stops the wrong medication. Okay, on to number nine, uh, poor diabetic control. So if you don't do a good job with your sugars, you have high blood sugar, there's lots of sugar in the blood, and this uh, can directly damage blood vessels amongst uh, lots of other things. So having poor diabetic control is a really bad move, um, and you can only expect heart trouble over a period of years and years with high blood sugars. So you gotta pay attention there and uh, work hard to control your sugar by checking it and eating the right stuff. Number eight, ignoring very high blood pressure. So according to the new definition of high blood pressure, that's pressure over 130 over 80 on average, about half of American adults have high blood pressure. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that definition, but uh, that's what it is in the textbook. So half of people 18 and over walking around out there have high blood pressure by the textbook. Um, if a person has a, a little bit high blood pressure, that could be managed with eating better, lots of fruits and vegetables, avoiding salt, exercising, managing stress, minimal alcohol intake. Um, and I definitely encourage my patients uh, in general with mildly elevated blood pressure to address it like that. But if somebody has really high blood pressure, 200 over 100, 
something like that, <clears throat> really high pressure, say anything over, I don't know, 160 over 100. That's very high pressure on average, if that's what it is, and that needs to be treated because otherwise something bad is going to happen. Check out this old school study from 1967 at a time when it wasn't known whether or not treating high blood pressure was helpful. They thought it was, but they weren't positive. So they were able to do a study where half of the patients in the study were treated for their very high blood pressure with medication and half just received placebo, sugar pill, uh, to see what happened. And the group of people who were treated with the medication, two of them had, uh, two out of um, 70, had something bad happen to them. And um, 27 out of 70 in the untreated group had something bad happen. That was over a year and a half. So 40% of the people who had uncontrolled high blood pressure had strokes, heart attacks, ruptured blood vessel, bleeding into the eye, all kinds of bad things. So really, if you have very high blood pressure, it's a major mistake not to treat it. And uh, uh, I consider that number eight in the list of dumbest things you can do for your heart. So that's it for the first of the videos in the series. We're going to do three videos. Uh, the next video will go through numbers seven, six, five, and four. Do me a favor, mash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. It helps get the feedback. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll try to answer them.